we're going to be looking at the waves that make up the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is made up of a family of waves that have common properties but do have different frequency and wavelengths. So the electromagnetic wave, which has the longest wavelength, so the lowest frequency is radio waves, followed by microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays, which have the shortest wavelength, and so the highest frequency. It's important to note that there's no clear cutoff in wavelength or frequency that distinguishes between the different waves. And so there's an overlap in wavelengths for the different regions. So for example, X-rays and gamma rays could have the same wavelength, but what does distinguish them is how they were produced. Visible light is made up of seven colours of the spectrum. And the way I remember the colours is Roy G. Biv or Richard of York gave battle in vain. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So red is just after infrared. So infra means below the red light. And the V, the violet coloured light, is just before ultraviolet, where ultra means above the violet light. So you can see that red light has a greater wavelength and violet light. You need to know the typical values for each electromagnetic wave. And a former student of mine showed me a really good way of remembering these values. And it's using the pH scale. So the wave that is in the center is visible light. And so that represents a pH of 7. So the wavelength of visible light is in the order of 10 to minus 7 meters. And you also need to know the range of visible light. So that is from 700 to 400 nanometers. So 700 nanometers representing the wavelength for red light, 400 nanometers representing the wavelength for violet light. And if you remember, nano means 10 to the minus 9. So 700 times 10 to the minus 9 meters gives you a wavelength of 7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters for red light and 4 times 10 to the minus 7 meters for violet light. The first wave which is radio waves represents a pH of 1 so it has a wavelength in the order of 10 to the minus 1 meters which is 0 0.1 meters. The last wave which are gamma rays represents a pH of 14 so the typical wavelength of gamma rays are in the order of 10 to the minus 14 meters. So once you've set your pH for 1, 7 and 14, you can then estimate the wavelengths for the remaining waves. So ultraviolet wavelength has to be smaller than visible light, so 10 to the minus 8, pH of 8. Infrared needs to have a larger wavelength than visible light, so it could be 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 5, so pH of 5 and 6. Microwaves need to be greater than infrared, but less than radio waves, so in the order of 10 to the minus 3 metres. And X-rays need to be somewhere between ultraviolet and gamma rays, so 
for example, 10 to the minus 10 meters. The common features of electromagnetic waves are that they are made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. They're all transverse waves. That means that the electric and magnetic fields oscillate at right angles to the direction of travel of the electromagnetic wave. Because they're transverse waves, they can be polarized. Because if you remember, that's a feature of only transverse waves. So that means the oscillations or vibrations can be confined to one plane only. They can all travel in a vacuum, that is empty space. And that's because electric and magnetic fields can exist in a vacuum. And they all travel at the same speed in vacuum, which is the speed of light. 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You need to know the characteristics and hazards of ultraviolet radiation. An ultraviolet has is made up of three bands, UVA, UVB and UVC. UVC is almost all of it absorbed by the ozone layer. So it doesn't reach the Earth's surface. Whereas 99% of the UV at sea level is in the form of UVA. And UVA causes the skin to tan and also become wrinkled. UVB also penetrates the Earth's atmosphere. And it's good in that it acts on the skin to produce vitamin D, which we need. But if we have too much of UVB, we're in danger of sunburn and skin cancer. So there was a recent story where a 17 year old girl who started using sunbeds regularly from the age of 12 was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of skin cancer. So to avoid sunburn and skin cancer, you should use sunscreen, which contains chemicals that filter out or absorb the UVB. So this has a sun protection factor of 50 plus, and it's, protect, it's protecting against UVA and UVB. And also, there was a story where a nurse used sunscreen back to 50 for almost 10 years and she was diagnosed with rickets, which is due to vitamin D deficiency. So it's a bit ironic for a nurse. So as with everything in life, you need a balance. So you need enough UV to prevent rickets, but not too much UV that would cause sunburn and skin or skin cancer.